the League serves as a, as a place for cities to collaborate together, to dream for the future. Um, in many ways, we're, a, we're an organization that is the summation of all the visions, aspirations, and hopes for local communities. Uh, the League is, uh, we're a nonprofit organization, we are an innovative organization, but our goal is to make it easier for local officials to govern back home. If the League is functioning at its highest level, um, the visions of those cities and towns will become uh, integrated into our state's vision, which in turn creates a stronger and better North Carolina. It's not like cities and towns are a new concept, or that they don't have roots dating back thousands of years. But whether we're talking about the settlements of Jericho from 9000 BC, or Oak Island, chartered in 1999, time brings change. Time brings new people, new mentalities. Our cities and towns go through transition. Our needs fluctuate. And although each municipality has its own identity and history, its own brand to set it apart, Municipalities also share issues and goals that are best addressed through unification by forming a league. In November 1908, at least 22 municipalities in North Carolina banded together and formed the Carolina Municipal Association. It made sense. The mayors of these cities saw the need for teamwork in protecting the interests and promoting the welfare of cities and towns. And to that end, they focused largely on legislative matters. This was a new organization with plenty of room to grow, plenty of opportunity. Today, what grew to become the North Carolina League of Municipalities is a robust, full service, modern organization of more than 540 great hometowns of all sizes across the state. The League is a source of advocacy at the state and federal levels. It's a source of education and professional development for local level officials and employees. It offers vital insurance and value-added services to improve the health and reduce risk for municipal employees. And it's a dependable resource of information, research, and original content to help municipalities grow and to understand the issues that may affect them. More than a century has passed since the Carolina Municipal Association. And although the basic reason for being remains unchanged, the League of Municipalities has made itself known as a dedicated, cooperative, and innovative group of public servants and support staff who share ideas, educate, advocate, and advance. To get a full appreciation for all the League does, it's good to know more about its history. The Carolina Municipal Association did have some strong early successes, like the Municipal Corporation Act and the Municipal Finance Act of 1917, which gave cities and towns more local control and the authority to issue bonds. The hard work of this group also directly led to legislation to allow zoning regulations, group insurance for municipal employees, and new revenue options important developments for cities and towns across North Carolina. But let's go back to 1922, the same year that the American Pro Football Association renamed itself the National Football League, the same year Reader's Digest magazine saw its first issue, the same year that WBT began broadcasting in Charlotte, North Carolina as an early licensed radio station, a fairly new form of commercial media that we saw in other major US cities that year just to set the scene as a year of change. For the League, 1922 marks the first reorganization of the Carolina Municipal Association into the North Carolina Municipal Association, marking a rebirth for the group that showed itself to be forward-minded as a century of dramatic change and invention would unfold. Under this organization, Municipal officials met more often to explore how to modernize city government and how it can meet the needs of the people. It was a new start, with less than 20 municipalities at the table for the reorganization. But it was intentional enough that membership grew, motivation grew, the group's leadership secured financing, and, after another reorganization, 
eventually hired its first full-time staffer, Patrick Healy Jr., recruited from the neighboring Virginia Municipal League. It was the same year, 1934, that the North Carolina group renamed itself the NC League of Municipalities and put a lot in its future. It wasn't just biennial legislative matters anymore. The League of Municipalities under Healy became a full-service organization with a permanent headquarters and a wealth of resources for cities and towns of all sizes. That included research, professional development, legislative advocacy, a magazine, and training for public safety employees. Healy spread the word around North Carolina, acting as a field representative, visiting with cities and towns on a regular basis. His salary at the time? A solid $250 a month. He made the same amount at the Virginia League, but accepted the North Carolina job because, as Healy himself said, it was a, quote, better challenge. And he rose to it, bringing on an office secretary, attorneys, and an emphasis on communications to keep municipalities informed on federal programs, state legislative issues, and internal activities. The League marked a sizable early success just one year into Healy's tenure, when the state legislature gave municipalities their first direct link to the state's gasoline tax revenue. Massively important, as cities and towns were having to prepare local streets for something that was growing increasingly popular, the personal automobile. As the state changed, League executive directors met routinely, and conferences year after year showed the undeniable growth of this organization. While that 1922 reorganization came together with less than 20 cities, the League was more than 130 strong by the 1936 convention. And by 1938, it represented 85% of North Carolina's municipal population. And it continued. New membership, new services, new issues, new collaborations, new solutions. The 1951 Powell Bill, one of the League's crowning achievements that still ripples across North Carolina. The League's motto became, in unity, there is strength. Cities and towns were plugged into a lively, stout resource and continued to grow out of its own shoes, thanks to the attention of Healy and, from 1942 to 1969, Executive Secretary Sis Steed. And it was impossible at this point to imagine a North Carolina without the League, a permanent fixture of collaboration, advancement, and community value for the people of the Tar Heel State. This permanence took physical form by the end of the 1970s, when the League, in cooperation with its friends at the NC Association of County Commissioners, built a permanent headquarters in downtown Raleigh, completed and fully paid for in 1979. The Albert Coates, local government center, a building name for the founder of the UNC Institute of Government, whose bust greets all visitors. The League and the NCACC built this facility together, a victory for and symbol of teamwork. And shortly after its completion, the League's membership had grown to represent nearly 100% of cities and towns across North Carolina. A new home, booming membership, bold leadership, constructive legislation. It didn't come with complacency. As then executive director Lee Wilson had said back in 1972, to stand still is to go backward. Words as valid as ever, as North Carolina today experiences accelerated change in an already swiftly spinning world. The league cannot sit idly by for the more than 540 municipalities it now represents. But its founding concepts of banding together, sharing ideas, and growing with unity remain what propels the organization. Let's take a look back at some of the milestones of more recent times.
core values define how the League lives its mission. They are not compromised for expediency or financial gain. They withstand challenges in the environment over time. They stand for what the League wishes to be and wishes to be known for. They help provide guidance and inspiration for members and staff. They reflect the soul of the League as an organization and as such are essential to sustaining the character of the League. The League will be ethical, financially sound, open and transparent, fair, equitable, innovative, forward-thinking, nonpartisan, inclusive and collaborative as it engages partners, stakeholders and external entities. The League will stand for good government and the value of public service, the principle that municipalities matter, cities working together within municipalities and municipalities working together through the League. The League's Board of Directors supports ensuring that these values and beliefs are reflected in the League's systems, structures, processes, and decisions. And that's how the League as a whole and its members as individuals make North Carolina a better place. Where do we want to see ourselves? What is the best outcome for municipal governments by the year 2030? Our job here at the League is to help them achieve those visions, which, to be very blunt with you, are uh, more responsive to customer needs and requests, more nimble in dealing with demographic and societal changes uh, in, in North Carolina, uh, more in charge of their own revenue streams and deciding where they're going to derive the funds that they need to provide public services that are necessary for the advancement and growth of the cities themselves, and to create um, cities that use technology in ways that are uh, that is more um, nimble in a modern society. You'll see this organization roll out more services uh, and improve the existing services that we have to lighten the load, to make it easier to govern uh, in a local community so that local officials can spend their time leading to the future and not necessarily worrying about the details of today. We can help them with the details of today and help them provide services at a higher level and at a lower cost. Visit the North Carolina League of Municipalities online at nclm.org. Thank you.